To build a radial chart in Tableau with distinct colors for each ring, I'll use a breakdown of sales by category. Each ring will represent a category's contribution to the total sales. So this provides a clear comparison of their proportions in a compact format. I'll start off on our data source tab because in order to create the radial chart, we need to union the data. And since sales and categories in our orders table, I'm going to drag order sheet under our original order table to union them together. This process stacks the two order tables on top of each other, which duplicates the number of rows we have. And you can see here it generated a field called table name, so we can distinguish the original table and the union table. So on a new worksheet, I'll start by pulling in our table name field. That way we can see the values within. And there are a few formulas that we'll need to create for a radial chart. So I'll create a calculated field and I'll call this radial points. In here I'll type if the table name contains one, then zero, else 270. Then I'll right click on our radial points, go to create and choose bins. And I want the size of the bins to be one, but all the other settings can stay the same. And since this radial chart is going to show the portion of sales for each category, I need to create a calculated field to sum up the sales for each category. And I'll call this radial LOD because I want to ensure that the sum of sales is computed specifically for each category. And we can do this using an LOD or level of detail function. So holding fix the category, I'll take the sum of sales. And typically when you build a radial chart, you want to rank the values. That way the most outer ring of the radial chart shows the highest value. And as the rings move towards the center, they represent the lower values in descending order. In here I'll do the rank unique of the negative sum of our radial LOD calculated field. So the rank unique ensures that if two categories have the same sum, they'll be assigned distinct ranks. And the negative sign will invert the sum, that way we can rank the values in descending order. And last we'll need to create our X and Y axes so we can plot the points that we created. So I'll start off with our X axis, and this is gonna be the sign of the index minus one multiplied by the window max of the max of pi divided by 180 and multiplied by the window max of the radial rank formula. And since the y-axis is going to be similar, instead of typing out all that again, I'm going to right-click on our x1 and duplicate it. Then I'll right-click and edit it and call it y. And for the y-axis, I just need to change out our sine with a cosine. Then to create the structure, I'll remove table name from our view. And I'll pull radial x into the columns and radial y into the rows. And to get the circular ring shapes, I need to pull our radial point spin into the marks. And I'll change the mark type from automatic to a line. And I want the point spin to determine the path of the line. Then for the x-axis, I'll right click, go to compute using, and choose the radial point spin. And I'll do the same thing for the y-axis. Now that we have our ring shape, I need to pull category into the marks so we can get three distinct rings for each category. So for the x-axis this time, I'll right click, go to edit table calculation, and for the radial rank, instead of the point spin, I'll choose the category. And I'll do the same thing for the y-axis. So I'll edit the table calculation, and for the rank, I'll choose category. To increase the size of our rings, I can use the size slider in the marks. And to change the color of all the rings, I'll use the color in the marks. But I want each ring to be a different color based on the category that it represents. 
So I'll change category in our marks to a color. Then I can edit the colors in the legend and assign a color to each of these categories. To add the category value to each ring, I'll drag category into the marks and make it text. But these category values are a bit long, so I'm going to create a calculated field to do an abbreviation of the categories. So I'll type if the category equals furniture, then whatever abbreviation I want to use for furniture. And I'll do that for all three values. I like to use an abbreviated field like this when I have limited space on my dashboard. So I'll drag our category abbreviated field in to replace our category field. And you can see the X and Y axis went red, and that's because I need to right click, edit the table calculation, and instead of category, choose the category abbreviation field we created. And I'll do the same thing for the Y axis. So now that we have our abbreviated categories in there, I don't like that they're on the bottom, and I want to move them to the start of the line. To do this, I'll go to the label, and for the marks to label, choose line ends. And since I want this to be the start of the line, I'll uncheck the label end. Then under alignment, I want to line it vertically centered and horizontally on the left. For the font, I want this to match the mark color, and I'll change it to be a little bit bigger, and I want it to be bold. And under the legend, I'll double click on one of our colors so I can reassign the colors to the values. I'd also like to add the percentage that each ring represents. So I'll add our radial LOD field into the marks and make this a text. And you can see right now it's the actual value. So I'm going to right click, go to quick table calculation, and choose percent of total. Then I'll right click format and make this a percentage with no decimals. But they're split on two lines right now. So I'm going to go to the label, edit the text, and I'll bring category first, then a colon, then the percent of total for the LOD calculation. For formatting, I'll uncheck Show Header for both of our axes. Then I'll format the worksheet to remove any shading. Under Lines, I'll remove the grid lines, the zero lines, and the access rulers. On a dashboard, I can now bring our radial chart in. I'll hide the title of the worksheet and then remove the legend. Then I'll resize the radial chart so it fits in our KPI card box. You can see there's still a little bit of overlap between the text and the radial rings. So I'm going to go back to the radial worksheet, and I'll use the size slider to make the rings a little bit smaller. Then under Label, I'll change the font to be a little bit smaller, and I'll make it a bit more bold so it stands out more. And now we have a radial chart that shows sales segmented by category. These radial charts are compact, and they're great for showing comparisons between categories or tracking progress.